Well, welcome to this talk. Now, I wanted to give a bit of feedback on a few videos we've done recently. We've looked at a video on ivermectin and some people are suggesting it might be good for treating some cancers. And we also looked at another drug, fenbendazole, and some people say it might be useful for treating some cancers. No large scale clinical trials have been done on it, so we are largely at the level of anecdotal evidence, although we have suggested some pretty interesting uh, some might say uh, impressive uh, pathophysiological pharmacodynamic mechanisms by which this effect could be occurring. And we've also talked about the right to try. Desperate people that are dying have the right to try whatever treatment they would like or whatever experience they want. And the, the, the analogy we used in the past, if they want to try some malt whiskey, then they can try some malt whiskey. You know, if someone's dying, they should be allowed to try what they want. But what I want to do in this is give you some feedback from your feedback. Now, of course, I'm not prescribing any drugs. I'm not recommending any treatment. This is purely an academic discussion and you'll have your own ideas on it. And the feedback I'm going to give you from you um, is not evidence. It's not science. It's not saying that it works. But if it's ignored by mainstream researchers, in my view, they are negligent. If this, what I'm about to talk about now, is ignored by mainstream researchers, in my view, they are negligent. So let me give you some of your anecdotal reports. Now, of course, these could be made up. We don't know how real they are, but they're all there under the comments of the video, so they're in public domain. So Jay says this, talking about ivermectin. I'm a stage four metastatic prostate cancer survivor, five and a half years now. That's, that's pretty good. So someone who's got stage four, that means it's all over the body, it's spread. But they've had that for five, year, five and a half years. Membendazole, ivermectin, atorvastatin, metformin. PSA, that's prostate-specific antigen, went from 1,900, which is massive. That means you've got prostate cancer basically all over the body. Went from 1,900 to undetectable for the past four years. So it's gone from 1,900 to undetectable. Oncologists couldn't care less I'm still alive. How can we get the word out faster? Disappointing from Jay's oncologist. Buzzy, B Buzzy says this. My friend's dad had terminal bladder cancer and had months to live. He started taking ivermectin and now he's cancer free within six months. Now, of course, Busy may not exist. I'm sure Busy does exist if you're watching. Uh, does this constitute scientific evidence? Of course not. Is this material which should go on to proper clinical trials? Of course it is. Am I recommending any particular treatments? Absolutely, emphatically not. But it is quite interesting, isn't it? Because remember, this is a video for academic stimulation only. Uh, Dag says, we have the right to eat sugar, drink alcohol, smoke tobacco, etc. But oh no, don't take a drug we can't make money into. Interesting point of view. Uh, Trash Can says, I believe right to try should not apply only to terminal patients, but it's a start. So what Trash is saying there is, yes, terminal patients should have the right to try these treatments, but heck, anyone should be able to try what they want, within reason, is the view expressed by Trash Can. Of course, I'm not expressing any opinion at all. I'm merely reporting what is in the comments. Uh, Little Red says this, and I get many tragic things like this. My wife just died of cancer, so so our, commis our commiserations were very sorry. My wife just died of cancer. The doctors refused to give her ivermectin. To me, that's a clear right to try situation. Why didn't Little Red's wife have the right to try if she wanted to? Because tragically, she died anyway. What's wrong with the right to try? Uh, Rock says... Whatever happened to your body? Not to be sarcastic, but I really mean that. And certain people are saying, my body, my choice. Not apparently when it comes to drugs that people can't make money out of. Then it's your body, someone else's choice. I find that outrageous. You can have your own view on it. Tech says, I first became aware of ivermectin in 1977 when I was working at a local, uh, local feed mill. Farmers would mix in ivermectin, which came in 50 pound bags, 50 pound bags, that's like 20 kilos of ivermectin, in their cattle feed to keep the cows from getting worms. Since then, it has become a miracle. 
So this this shows that ivermectin, we can get 50 pound bags that are cheap enough just to put a scoop into cattle feed. This can be made for essentially no cost. Essentially free. It would cost more to put it in bubble wrap strips than it would to manufacture the, the, the actual preparation itself. Now, uh, Suzy says this about streptomycin, which is a drug for treating tuberculosis. My dad had TBs and the doctors were arguing because it hadn't been trialled. So at this stage, there'd been no clinical trials, but uh, Suzy's dad had tuberculosis. Uh, he said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm dead anyway, so I might as well try it. And he signed to give permission to have the uh, streptomycin. It was the first test case for streptomycin and he survived for another 60 years. So here we have, and presumably this is the reason that Suzy is with us now. Suzy's dad was taking an experimental drug called streptomycin and it cured his tuberculosis, saved his life, and thankfully Suzy is with us now. Not saying all experimental drugs are as good as streptomycin, of course not, but it's an interesting anecdote. Uh, Joe says this, exactly why the heck should anyone lord it over desperate people? Couldn't agree more, uh, Jose. Why should anyone lord it over desperate people? And these people are very often desperate. They should have the right to try, in my view, as was the previous, uh, in his first incarnation, President Trump uh, advocated. Trust says, of course you are correct. Can you imagine the mindset of someone who does not agree with this? Pure tyranny. Are we under tyrannical control because of what we are not allowed to try? Interesting point of view from Trust. Uh, Ilian said, government should not interfere with being born or dying. These experiences are right out of the hand of God. Now, moving on to the video we did on uh, fenbendazole. Fenben. Fenbendazole. Uh, Fenbendazole gave a friend five more years. She'd been directed to hospice 30 days later, 100% cancer free with Fenbendazole. Now, what can we take from that? That's, that's from Judy. Uh, Judy may or may not exist. This could be someone who's just making this up. Of course, it's just a comment on a YouTube video. But I don't believe that's the case. I believe Judy definitely believes what she's saying. And if there's any truth at all in what she's saying, this has to be investigated. And if professional investigators are not investigating this, I, I suggest that they are being uh, negligent. Uh, Petrila says, I have high grade DCI, uh, DCIS, that stands for ductal carcinoma in situ, in the breast. Um, in other words, breast cancer. I've been using fenbendazole and ivermectin for six months and have shrunk my tumour by over a centimetre. So we have two preparations here. Now, which one was doing the shrinking? Of course, we don't know. It's always confusing when you've got two variables. But again, you would think that people that are charged with researching cancer in national bodies would think, good grief, we better look at that one, hadn't we? Uh, Lacry, and I'm, on, I'm on not using the full names here, because, uh, but they are all in the comments. Lacry says, my husband is, my husband is taking fenbendazole. He has glioblastoma, brain tumour. Stage four brain tumour. He was having terrible seizures until he started taking fenbendazole. He hasn't had one in 16 months. Quite incredible, if, if true. And I'm sure it is, quite, but quite incredible. Also now at three years with his terminal condition, he's outlived his 12-month prognosis ma massively. So he was taking lots of fits, they stopped. He was given 12 months to live, still alive, thankfully. We're delighted to learn, still alive at three years after. He remains well. The tumour simply isn't growing. And in the previous videos, we did look at uh, pharmacodynamic reasons why this might be the case. For example, we looked at the fact that the spindles that pull the chromosomes apart when the cells divide, uh, th th they don't preliminarise, those spindles don't form. And so th the spindles don't form that pull the chromosomes into separate cells. So you can't get two separate cells from one cell. Therefore, you're not getting mitosis. You're not getting cell division. Therefore, obviously, the tumour can't carry on growing because it depends on ongoing cell division. There is a there is a pharmacodynamic, pathophysiological, biochemical rationale to this that should be, in my view, investigated. Ilfeli, fenbendazole cured my dog's terminal squamous cell carcinoma. Now, quite a few people have had the pets cured or believe they've had the pets cured. 
So Fembendazole cured my dog's terminal squamous cell carcinoma. Fantastic stuff. My dog had two months to live, presumably from a veterinary opinion. I gave her Fembendazole and 2.5, late, 2.5, two and a half years later, she's fine. So terminally ill dog, fine, two and a half years later, delighted. Uh, Kenny says, my mum was given six months to live in March with pancreatic cancer. Refused all two treatments and took 222 milligrams of fenbendazole six days a week. Eight months later, is still healthy and tumour has not increased in size. Doctors not interested to know how this happened because she didn't want their treatments. So again, interesting anecdote. Perhaps something that should be researched. Terry says, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have bladder cancer. I had surgery to remove the tumour. Did six BCG treatments, never had chemo or, or radiation. And I started taking Fenben, Fenbendazole. When I went back for my 18 month checkup, they thought it had come back. They found something in my bladder. They did biopsies. The biopsies came back negative. The surgeon saw them and asked them for them to be retested because he was convinced that what he saw were bladder cancer cells. Biopsies came back negative. And the biopsies, of course, are the definitive pathological diagnosis. I know that Fenben has kept me cancer free now for two and a half years. Thank you for sharing this information. And also, I had a friend who was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer, had chemo, had radiation, and started taking Fenbendazole this, started taking this, which means Fenbendazole. His last checkup, he was told things are in remission and he's singing again, wonderful. There is an easy way to handle this. Dave said, my beloved dog was diagnosed two years ago with terminal cancer that had spread widely. She was given at best six months. Yet she is still with me and happy and healthy. I put her on Fenben right after the diagnosis and I give full credit to Fenben for her still being here and enjoying a good quality of life. No real side effects I've noticed, perhaps some watery stools occasionally. So again, Dave's dog here given uh, six months to live Two years later, dog is still alive and healthy. And now dogs, of course, are massively important. But if a treatment's working for a dog, is there a good chance it's working for humans? Well, we, we are really quite similar in a lot of ways. And a lot of veterinary drugs are human drugs anyway. So these are interesting stories, firstly because they're saving uh, our, our, our beloved dogs and also because the applicability to humans is significant and merits detailed further investigation. Exhibit says, last year I was diagnosed with a small grade one uterine cancer. Uh, this was done via biopsy, so taking a bit and having a look at it under the microscope. They gave me quite a bit of time between the diagnosis and my surgery for hysterectomy, removal of the uterus. Uh, they didn't seem to have a big sense of urgency, so I decided to see what I could do on my own to help this. So I started some natural therapies and also added uh, Pancure, which is uh, Fenbendazole. About two and a half months later, I had my surgery. They test, tested me a while on the table and also tested lymph nodes to make sure all is clear. My pathology report was all clear, no cancer at all. My pathology report was all clear, no cancer at all. I, I was the luckiest girl in the cancer center that day. They surmised that the biopsy removed the cancer. That could be true, but what are the chances? It could be the initial biopsy was wrong or that the fenbendazole worked, but who knows? Thank you for spreading the word. Now, normally when you're resecting a tumour, you resect the tumour and you do what you call a wide, a wide border excision. So if you've got a little tumour there, you take a much bigger bit from round about it to make sure you've got all the little bits. Because if there's a little straggle, a finger of tumour that you've missed, it can grow back. So the idea that it could be treated with a biopsy uh, to me is inconceivable because when you take a biopsy you're only taking part of the tumour you, you, you're, not, you're not taking the whole thing and you're certainly not doing a, 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 a wide border excision so very impossible in my view to think that the biopsy could have cured the cancer uh, Janiel says my cat had lymphoma and my vet said almost five years ago now that she should be put down because he only had weeks to live so cat with lymphoma um, Aggressive, aggressive form of uh, blood cancer. 
uh, that he should be put down because he only had weeks to live. Took him home and researched and found out about fenbendazole and he's doing good. I continue supplementing with fenbendazole. So cat with lymphoma, vet said put him down, put him, uh, uh, he put, put, put him down straight away. Five years later, still living a good life and uh, giving pleasure to uh, to June, which of course is, is, is brilliant. Thank you for, uh, th th this is uh, KRS saying to me, thank you for highlighting uh, Fen Ben. Three years ago, I cured my 13 year old dog, stage four liver cancer. Cancer grow size grew to the size of a small lemon uh, and, and the dog was only given up to a month to live. I used high doses of uh, Pancure, five milligrams in liquid form. Cancer was gone within four months. Now, the idea that something can take away a liver tumour, a liver secondary, almost certainly from the bowel, to me, is, is amazing. Um, when we do, we have patients in with colorectal cancer and, and that commonly metastasizes to the liver. And when you do the scan and you see that the tumour's in the patient's liver, especially if there's multiple metastatic deposits in the liver, basically that is a terminal diagnosis, nearly always a terminal diagnosis. So here... Uh, we have uh, a dog cured of liver, but we assume a liver metastases. Th th this is very, very impressive findings. Um, this works well, and I will only use Pancure, that's Fembendazole, should I ever need it. Well, that's, that's your opinion, KRS, of course, we couldn't possibly comment. Uh, in May 2025, 20, it's my dog's 17th birthday coming up. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. I'm, I'm delighted for you and, and your dog. None of you are giving the dog's names, unfortunately, but there you go. It's what we've got. Uh, Maggie says, I used it to clear my cancer. Bob says, I was diagnosed with small cell uh, carcinoma of the left lung. That's one of the bronchogenic carcinomas. Uh, in November 2022, I was told I was terminal stage four as it already spread to my lymph nodes and pleura. That's the membranes around about the lung. I've been taking fenbendazole and ivermectin for a month now daily. Bloods from hospital yesterday were all clear, so n no ill effects from them, which is brilliant. Uh, Richard says, I cured my lymphoma with fenbendazole, 222 milligrams for a week, then a week off for two months. So it sounds like Richard was taking 222 milligrams of fenbendazole a day for a week and then a week off, then back on for a week. Uh, he did that for two months, gained all my weight back, feel great, haven't been back to the dock in two years. Now, these are anecdotal reports. Scientifically, they comprise essentially no evidence at all, but they are really what I would classify as qualitative research. They are people's qualitative experiences. And the thing about qualitative research is it can be used, and in this case, in my view, should be used as a basis for proper quantitative clinical trial-based evaluations. And in fact, with this, we wouldn't even need a pharmaceutical com company to put up the $50 million for a randomised double-blind controlled trial because we could actually collect retrospective data. If people had the right to try, they could try these drugs and we could look at them over a long period of time. We could build up national cohorts of tens of thousands of patients in no time at all because we're losing people all the time. We're losing dogs all the time <coughs> from cancers. This data could be collected on humans and animals. And then we can hand it over to our statisticians and the statisticians can tell us mathematical truth based on these potential prospective observations. This could be done. In my view, it should be done. Unfortunately, it is not being done. Let me know why you think, why not, but for now, as always, thank you for watching.